All right. So we have Kay on here um, and he works with Legacy Power um, and he's currently a district manager. It sounds like he is moving his way up into uh, potentially higher positions here in the near future where he can recruit to, to other markets as well. Um, I appreciate you taking the time on here. Um, first off, I'd like to, I know your story, but a lot of the other people don't know, you know, where you came from, what things you went through. So if you want to just give us a quick little uh, synopsis on where you've been in the past and um, how you've gotten to where you're at today. Yeah, perfect. Thanks, Glenn. I, I love I love doing these. I love sharing my experience. Um, it's definitely been a journey. Um, I'm, I'm going to kind of run through my background pretty quickly. Um, in other podcasts, I've gone into more details. I'd be more than happy to share them. But just for sake of time, I'm kind of just going to run through it. Um, so basically, long story short, I was I was born into an Indian family. And, you know, for anyone who's grown up in this country, living with any Indian family, Asian family, it can be difficult because there's expectations that you always have to reach. When I was younger, I was able to meet those expectations for the most part. Um, but what happened is, and again, long story short, I went ended up graduating high school, top of my class, and I went to Duke University. And at Duke University, my life kind of changed completely. Um, so I, I had started getting into drugs and alcohol. It was very common at Duke. And I tell you this all for a reason, because everything that's happened has brought me to where I am today. Um, so the whole goal at that time was to go to medical school. And so um, my family, the best way to understand this is I am the oldest grandchild on both sides, my mom and my dad's side of an Indian family. So imagine my whole life, I was basically showcased around like a show pony. Like, look, this is my grandson, the doctor. This is my son, the doctor. And so I, I tell you this because it was, I, I lived with a pretty high level of stress and I found unhealthy ways to cope with it for the longest time. Um, so I ended up getting through undergrad. Um, I ended up, well, let me back up. I, I left Duke University after two years because I woke up one day with my jaw wired shut. I mean, it was, I had just been assaulted in the middle of Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, my jaw was broken in three places, my nose and my right orbit. Um, I, I remember waking up in front of the doctor and asking him, I'm like, doctor, is my, is my, are my teeth falling out? Cause I felt like my teeth were loose. Um, and he was like, no son, that's, that's your jaw it's hanging off. And it was, I was had my jaw wired shut for six months, um, and was prescribed very high dosage narcotics at that time from both the pain doctor, as well as the psychiatrist. Cause I was diagnosed with PTSD. Um, so I, I, I proceeded to get addicted to those medications. I ended up leaving Duke, which was a huge hit on my identity. And I ended up going to Clemson, where it's the same place I grew up, where my dad was a professor. Um, and being in Clemson was not easy because this is the same place I had grown up before. Like all my friends were there. It's a small community. And so, and, and not only that, but my dad was pretty high up in the university administration. He was one of the deans of the business school. And so imagine when your future doctor's son is showing up, appearing in the newspapers for DUIs and for drug possessions, one thing after another. Um, and so, and again, there's so much to it, but um, this, this type of life can always end up only one way. And I live that um, that Jekyll and Hyde lifestyle for the longest time. And I hit it really well because I ended up getting into medical school uh, my second time. And I did a few years at medical school, which um, for me were definitely transformative years. I, I definitely learned a lot, but I was also miserable. I was trying to live that second life. And so it was, and again, that life can only end one way. And it ended up with me being dismissed from medical school and losing everything. Um, then from 2015 to 2017, I, 
I literally lost everything. I was homeless. I was, I mean, you hear these stories all the time from people who came from everything, but I, I truly did believe that I was at the top of a mountain, like about to be a doctor. I was like, I can't go much higher I in my mind. And, and then that whole house of cards I had built for myself was toppled over one day, just like that. Um, so it, it wasn't easy. And especially, so finally I did find recovery in 2017, where I basically woke up in county jail. And I, um, I mean, this was this, I had been to jail quite a few times before for like one night stays. But this time, no one was getting me out. Like my parents had enough, they left me in there. And I spent 61 days in county jail, which for a lot of people may not seem like much. But for me, 61 days was a long time. And, and in that, in that time, I, I got a new perspective on life and I figured out, um, you know, I, I, I started listening to the preacher that ended up coming every Sunday and I actually found God. And it's not because, and let me be very clear, this is not because like it, it, the reason I found God, I was a hardcore atheist growing up because I have extremely scientific background. The reason I found God is because I was so desperate for something more. I was so desperate that there was more out there. Um, so I ended up voluntarily going to a Christian rehab after. And over the next few years, I, I was completely clean, but they were still some of the toughest years of my life from uh, 2017 to 2019. And I, I went from halfway house to halfway house. I have worked so many temp jobs, you name it. I've worked, um, you know, doing, worked for a mover, moving company. I've worked for, you know, as, as, uh, as what do they call them? Um, a machine operator. I've worked third shift jobs. I've worked at honey baked ham. I've worked multiple call center positions because you have to remember, this is someone who like my background might be impressive, but at the end of the day, if I don't become a doctor, my undergrads in biological sciences, no one wants someone with a biological sciences background. And so what ended up happening is I found legacy power just by chance. And, and this legacy power has completely changed my life. And I'm not going to go too much into the story about legacy, but ever since then, it's, it's been what I've learned has been invaluable because, and more than anything, I got my life back. I got my sense of self-worth and I've redefined things for myself. Like what I thought was important for the longest time was no longer important. And my whole perspective has changed in a lot of things. Appreciate you sharing all that. Um, so it sounds like from what you're saying that you you've came from, you know, uh, a rough past. You had some drug issues. Uh, you, you became clean since then. You found God as well. Um, and legacy has really helped you become who you are today as far as, you know, being able to sit in front of me today, being clean and sober and uh, and, you know, doing the right things. So during this time of coming through this, what type of things um, are you grateful for that you've experienced and how do you like continuously practice gratitude? That's a great question and something I feel very strongly about. And so to me, like this may sound crazy, Glenn, but gratitude wasn't a thing to me growing up. And I may sound kind of crazy, but you have to understand when you're in that you know, the Indian environment is very cutthroat. You don't, it's, even though it's a great community and everything, it's, you don't have time to show gratitude or actually reflect and think about these things. I was always on the go looking for the next thing. And it was, it's so unhealthy because it's all about me, me, me all the time. And a big part of that was the drugs and alcohol. Um, but, but it's no excuse. But what I have found in recovery is, I have a lot to be grateful for. I mean, first of all, being alive, I, I have overdosed on heroin um, double digits times. I don't even know the number. I just know it's more than 10. Um, like I'm talking about had to be Narcan to live again. And so as crazy as it may sound, 
the biggest reason I have gratitude is because I never forget. I, I sometimes have to think and like purposely look, I will sometimes look back in pictures of me from that time period or look back at messages I was sending to people, whatever, just as a reminder, like what your life was at one point. And so that that's, those are just some things that help me. And I, I mean, I can name the common things. I mean, I have plenty to be grateful for. I'd be more than happy to go into that, but more than anything, I'm grateful for my family and for second chances. And both of those go hand in hand. That's awesome. So um, when I, when I'm talking to, when I, when I think about gratitude, you know, it's hard for a lot of us to practice gratitude. Um, is there anything that you'd recommend for somebody as far as like maybe some people that you've looked up to that practice gratitude or, yeah. or maybe, you know, practices that you implement that, uh, people can, can kind of get some, uh, information from? Yeah. Yeah. So my regional manager, Paul Rundle actually, pointed out something to me yesterday and something that is I've been really taking to heart because I, I like to think that I express gratitude decently well but I, I recently we have something at Legacy Power called Big Check Friday where it's it's a great marketing tool and I've been on it plenty of times and so Paul Paul we were just talking we were at a wedding yesterday and he was like AK why not, I have a challenge for you. Instead of posting your big checks, and I get it, you do it for recruiting, everyone does it, it's fine. But instead of posting about your cars or all that stuff, why don't you start posting about what reps have accomplished and what other people? And that is something that I have made a conscious effort from the, now forward to start doing. I start instead of getting back because it's so easy for me to resort back to that me, me, me mentality, even though the drugs are gone, I'm still a sick person in a lot of ways. And it's not, not many men can admit that, but I have a long way to go and it's constant self-improvement. Um, so yeah, I mean, gratitude is everything. I, I, I don't do the things that I know I should do. And one of the reasons is because I am very good at like sitting back and reflecting and taking times. But for some people that I admire, like they have to write it down. Like gratitude lists work very well. I know a lot of people do like Sunday planning and then they do a gratitude list every single morning. Um, and I'm not going to lie. I look up to those people for taking that time and I wish I could say I'm doing it perfectly. I think I, I am leading with a grateful heart, but at the same time, there's a lot I could still do better. Okay. I appreciate you sharing that. And, you know, we have a lot of people that are in the mastermind that, you know, aren't at the level that you're at right now being a district manager. Um, so obviously gratitude helps from my experience. It, it helped me to understand the, like abundance kind of hand in hand right so like being uh you know thankful for what we do have will just bring that many much more stuff in the future um you know moving on to a little bit more of the knowledge stuff i know that you've been in the industry for a good amount of time now and everybody that's going to be watching this is going to be a part of the solar industry in one way or another um do you have anything that you can recommend them you know maybe some books that you read or some strategies or any yeah, sort of knowledge absolutely. that you kind of absolutely as far as books are concerned the the one book that i've based my whole sales technique on is a book called you can't teach a kid to ride a bicycle at a seminar i don't know if you've ever heard of it uh but it's this guy sandler this guy sandler writes the book and it's it breaks down selling to something called the Sandler submarine, which is basically there's different compartments and it's, it's amazing. It is, it is an absolutely life-changing book. So you can't teach a kid to ride a bicycle at a seminar is definitely one to look up. Um, other, I mean, I read books all the time. I, I'm not a one I use for all the, all the guys I train is of course, door to door millionaire. I think that has a lot of good stuff in it, but I mean, Honestly, there's, I wish I had more time to do reading and I, I am going to start having my office do more regular readings. I mean, we'll do it every once in a while, but I mean, there's, there's just so much knowledge out there and it's, it's, 
it's overwhelming at times. I love it personally because I love knowledge. I love learning. But I guess the biggest advice I could have for people is find out what you're interested in. And if that's solar or if it's not and that's your job, figure out a way to enjoy it. And do, if you truly enjoy something, then I am a true believer that if you truly in your heart enjoy it, you're going to be spending the time to develop that knowledge and get better at what at your craft. And so that's basically what happened with me and solar. I, I fell in love with the product. I fell in love with my company, the lifestyle. And so like working hard and developing that knowledge wasn't, wasn't tough for me. Awesome. So you, You've been with Legacy for a while now. Um, what are what Years. are mainly they? What's what's some of the things that they do? What, what are what are some of the things that they practice? Is it mainly uh, so, as far as like? Go ahead. Yeah, the best. Here's the best example I can give you um, as far as Legacy Power as a company is concerned. When I started at Legacy. I didn't know anything about solar, nothing about, I didn't even know door to door was a thing. Like I truly just a couple of years ago, I, I mean, if someone told me there were door to door salesmen, I would think like, that's a thing still. Cause I had, I hadn't, the house I grew up in never had door to door sales where I didn't really think about it. And then I hadn't lived in a house before. Um, so what was your original question? Just like what, uh, what are kind of their processes for? Oh, leg- yeah. So, or- yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So back, back with legacy. So I ended up falling into legacy power, almost like a scam. So what happened was someone, this is a funny story. Someone who I had gone to rehab with a few years ago, he had, he had told me about this job. I knew he had just come back from Chicago He was working with Legacy Power at Chicago. So I knew of the company's name. I knew he was doing really well, um, or at least he said he was doing really well. So I ended up meeting with him once he was back in town in Greenville, South Carolina, and he was telling me about the opportunity. And you have to remember, Glenn, at this point, I was leaving. I was currently working. Uh, I think I had just gotten a raise to $14 an hour um, lifting furniture and doing installations uh, for furniture installations. And I was, I, what I'm getting at is I was so desperate for something more. I knew that something more was out there, but I just needed someone to give me the chance. I knew sales would, it would be the right way for me to go, but I didn't have anyone giving me the opportunity. I mean, looking back, I feel crazy because I don't, I mean, it was pretty easy, but I, what ended up happening is I, I proceeded to give this guy money over the past few months. For over a few months, I get, kept giving him money. I ended up giving him about $800 total, which remember for me making $14 an hour, $800 is like two weeks pay. And so it was a lot, but this shows you how badly I wanted to believe in something more. Um, so what ended up happening is I ended up messaging uh, Doug Robinson, Legacy Power CEO. What'd you give uh, who money to? I didn't. didn't the guy. Get so the guy. Money. I kept giving him money for onboarding. So he he kept telling me how there was money for for shirts for my for my iPad and and I, I know it's, yeah he was and I know how I know how crazy it sounds now but you have to remember I was I was at a point in life where. I just, I was willing to believe whatever. If you right. tell me there's this opportunity, I'm going to hope for the best and see how it goes. Cause in my mind, it can't get that much worse. Um, at least when it comes to work. And so what ended up happening is I messaged Doug Robinson asking him about, um, let's call him John Doe. Like why John Doe has been asking me for all this money. And I said, he's been talking about this Paul Rundle guy, but I've never talked to Paul myself. And Doug was like, you know what, let's, let's see, uh, go reach out to Paul. And I reached out with Paul and Paul was like, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. This guy, John Doe, he was fired from Legacy Power a few months ago. And he was like, but there may be a silver lining. And so the next day I ended up meeting with Jory Sullivan and Paul Rundle at a Starbucks 
And um, not only did Legacy Power give me a job, they gave me that $800 back with no strings attached. Like I could wow. be anyone. This is a guy who I had a breathalyzer in my car at the time. I roll up in a beat up car with a breathalyzer in it, coming to these guys saying how I was scammed from a guy I went to rehab with. And so imagine what these guys are probably thinking. And, but they they ended up they ended up giving me a shot, and that's exactly how they said it. They're like, you know, we'll give you a shot. We'll see. Maybe you could do it. It's, it's right. like. I mean, they're let's do you, just do you they're see pretty a, happy uh, now. Trend at all in in the industry um, for like people that are getting into the solar that are, you know, they have a similar story to yours, um, you know, where they are kind of desperate and they're like, man, I'll do anything. I'll even knock doors. Right. Yeah, that's like, basically what it comes down to. I'll even knock doors. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So little I, did I know that knocking doors has made me more money than I ever knew possible. <laughs> right. No, I agree. That's, that's awesome. And congratulations on all your success. So like going to that part of it, as far as knocking doors, you know, people have a really hard time getting out there. Um, and actually just the hardest door is your car door. Most of the time is getting out to knock that first door. Is there anything that you can uh, shine some light on that as far as what's helped you or helped your teams? Gratitude. I mean, that's the biggest thing I could say, gratitude. If you ha truly have that gratitude in your heart, you're going to find joy in anything, man. Like, that's that's one thing I've come to learn. Like, I like whether it's spending time with my family or selling a solar deal or training someone, I mean, yeah, I'm stressed a lot of times, but at the end of the day, I am grateful and I approach things with that grateful heart. So when I get in my head, which I do all the time, I'm not immune to it either. I'll get in my head, but I usually just take a time to sit back. Sometimes I'll call my wife or call my mom or something and have a conversation and remember, remind myself, like, this is why you do it. Or I'll go, I have a six-year-old who's a uh, non-verbal autistic and he needs a lot of therapies, like stuff's expensive. So I, I, I keep these things in mind, like my family's depending on me. So that thing and the fact that look at where you've come from, don't stop now, man. You've come too far to quit. Right. Did, did you ever have any problem? One of the common things that I've seen in the industry is, is people that have never made a lot of money. They get into solar and you make a lot of money real fast. And um, how would you suggest somebody can keep going or up level their income number rather than just saying, OK, I only need to make 50 grand a year. So, you know, I'll get one sale a month. Like, what would you recommend? I would recommend. So what I would say to anyone listening is we're living in unusual times especially when it comes to an industry like solar, there's not many opportunities like that out there. I tell people I interview all the time. The best thing I could say is seize this opportunity because it's not going to be around forever. Like, right. Or go, go talk to some alarm guys and ask them how door to door can be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. I talked to a lot of uh, alarm guys that come into solar and you have kind of a similar thing most of the time that I've seen, you know, people that are in the alarms, they're, they're trying to hit a certain number. Um, with that, you're not getting paid as much. So that number takes a lot more time and effort to hit a lot of times. And then when they get into solar, you know, they want to sell. Yeah. yeah. They, they become complacent, complacent. And that's what it really comes down to. So my advice to people would not be, believe it or not, it would not be to go out and use drugs and alcohol and get into recovery, but find a way to get that gratitude, to get that sense of gratitude and that sense of well-being without, I mean, having to go through all the crap I've went through because that's not necessary. Right. Yeah. So um, getting into more of the motivation side, is there any books or what do you, what kind of keeps you motivated? I mean, gratitude and motivation kind of almost play together. Like your gratefulness kind of gets you motivated. But um, do you recommend people set like certain goals and make Absolutely. to make sure them get stay motivated? And how, how would you suggest to, to do that? I would definitely set goals. And by goals, I don't just mean work goals. I don't just mean financial goals. 
I mean like family goals. Like what do you want to be able to provide? What kind of time do you want to be able to give this? What can you do for the better world? Not just your little bubble. So, I mean, I, I'm sure I could think it out and actually come up with a formula of things that would help. But I mean, there's, it's, it's all of it. What gives me motivation is, is my family. It is remembering the past. It is, I mean, good books do help. Um, there's definitely a lot that people you can get out of books. And, but usually the only time I really have, like anytime I'm driving, I'm always listening to some kind of podcast or book. That's basically the only time I really have to do it. But with that being said, I still will. But I think the biggest one thing that really has helped me is ever since being in recovery, you know, I, I lived that life for so long, putting substances into myself that I lived an extremely unhealthy life. I mean, if you saw pictures of me but five years ago, you would be shocked. Like it's, it's unreal. And so one thing that's really helped me is focusing on my health. And I know you could probably relate to this, but that focus on the gym, I got really into uh, physical training. I actually got my personal trainer certification and worked as a personal trainer for a little while. Um, but I did all of this because it was something I enjoyed. And when you, when you do stuff that you enjoy, it's, it's easy. It's like a uh, positive feedback. It keeps helping. Like you're motivated to do it, that you do it, that you're motivated more. And it, it's an upward cycle, which helps a lot, but you have to find those things that you're interested in. And, and for me working out and the gym was a big thing. And it, it taught me goal setting more than anything like that taught me goal setting. If you can reach your goals, your weight goals, your muscle goals, whatever it is, that's some of the toughest, like some of the things you need the most motivation in the world for. Like if you go through that, it can make other things seem a little easy, just like how I feel like going through what I've been through in life has helped me tremendously. Yeah, that's awesome. I can definitely relate. Uh, you know, about two years ago, I had issues with my lower back and um, it was kind of it was debil debilitating because I was during this time. I actually just started a if I could get 30 deals in 30 days and I was like recording and let, letting people know like my progress. And then my back just started to slowly get worse and worse and started to get really bad sciatic pain. Yeah. And um, put me on the ground for literally like a four week period where I couldn't even go out and knock. And, um, you know, it was mainly because I was, I was uh, just not taking care of myself. I was overweight. I wasn't going to the gym like I used to. My core strength was bad. My leg strength, I was sitting all day, you know, like I was either walking to a house and sitting inside the house or driving my car sitting in my car going to the next house yeah, I get it <laughs> so um so yeah I can definitely relate I've lost like 50 pounds since then and yeah now that's it's awesome I've been watching your progress that's amazing man that's yeah, uh, I appreciate it yeah it, it says something when you set out to reach a goal and then actually achieve it right no absolutely so um yeah I appreciate you taking the time so I, I wanted to ask you a couple things I know that you've been in the industry for a good amount of time now. Um, do you have any like specific information on how you guys go about like closing deals? Like maybe some like key different things that you guys say to help the homeowner really feel like this is the right thing for them, especially in your market where you're at. Yeah, let me, I've actually, so recently Legacy Power had me come to their, the headquarters in Utah to film my clothes actually. Um, so I actually wrote it out from beginning to end. Obviously, I, it change, things change a lot. But I mean, the biggest thing is the Sandler submarine. And I cannot emphasize that book enough. And so like the, the steps in the submarine are you start out with bonding and rapport because that's your basis. You, once you get that bonding and rapport, that fundamental, like they've already bought into you, then you set the upfront contract, which is when I come back, tomorrow at 5 p.m. to meet with you and your wife, this is what we're going to go over. We still won't necessarily know you're qualified, but we'll be one step closer. And so then you get into pain, talk about the rate increases. 
talk about not owning, not having any control, whatever it may be. There's pain questions that you could ask, like, tell me more about that. Can you be more specific? Give me an example. How long has this been a problem? What have you tried to do about that? And did that work? And so like all these pain questions are so crucial because you're getting these people to sell themselves. They're starting to realize, and, they're, and this is why I love solar so much because it's very logical. Like I can't, like no one can out logic me because I'm not going to sit down with you if it's not going to make sense. So I'm only going to sit down with people and make sense for. It. And so at, then at the end of the day, my clothes is basically me for first them buying into me and then me out logicing them basically as crazy as that sounds. So anyways, after pain, there's the budget step in solar with the no cost out of pocket. We don't really have a budget step as much. Um, you could ask like having budgeted for the rate increases, but that kind of goes back to pain. Um, and then, and then there's the decision step, which this is where you show them the proposal. You, by this point, you should have already sold them. A lot of times I'll throw out a line saying, um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, um, by this point, you've probably realized that this is why people do it. Um, can you think of, if, if all of what I'm saying is true and the numbers make sense, can you think of any reason why you wouldn't want to qualify for this? And so now I'm closing them before I've even gone through the numbers with them. And so it's, they're already sold. And so if, if they aren't, I'll keep going back and answering more questions. I will ask, do you have any more questions? About 10 times on average before I'll go into the numbers because I want to get out everything. I'll sometimes even sit there, like a pro move is sitting there in silence for a minute. <laughs> like that, you know how long those long silences could get uncomfortable, but sometimes like what I've learned is people will come up with more questions, then they'll start thinking about something and I my, I want to get it all out of the way during this contact. And so then the decisions made, then there's the fulfillment, passing credit, um, then there's the post sell. The last step of the compart of the submarine is the post sell. And this in solar, this is arguably the most important part. And that's constantly keeping your customers updated. Let them know what's going on, not only up until install, but after all the way through PTO and after that, because guess what? I could not do anything, Glenn. I could take off next year completely and make six figures just off of some referrals. Right. Like developing that, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about. Like if I wanted to take off next year, I could. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It and you're in what uh, market? I don't think you told everybody. Sorry, the, the Carolina. So I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Um, I do both North and South Carolina. I also started a campaign in Mississippi. Um, so I'm, I'm working on actively expanding throughout the country. Okay. And um, in that market, is it more uh, lease options or more purchase options? more purchase. So that's actually an, an interesting point. When I first started, I started in Greenville, South Carolina, and Legacy Power only did leases then in South Carolina. So we had a part a strategic partnership with Sunrun and everyone does was doing leases. Um, I was actually one, I was the first person in my region to start doing purchases. I, I had talked to someone with Titan one day and she was like, I don't understand why you're doing leases still. You need to start doing purchase. And in my mind, I was like, no one's going to want to take out this loan. Part of my whole close was like, this is different because you're not going to have a loan. <laughs> and, but I realized that, especially in South Carolina, it's so much better for the customer when they can get that, when they, because South Carolina is a state tax credit too. And so I, I really just figured it all out, like, because my training was all in the lease, but then I trained myself on solo NetSuite, and then I started training people throughout my region. So I've been doing purchases now for over a year and a half, but I was trained on the lease. So it was an interesting transition. Okay. So is there a time where you will, will not sell a purchase and sell a lease? Or is it 100% yeah. always purchased? No, no, abs so we, right now in South Carolina, we could sell the lease, but not in North Carolina, not quite yet. Um, okay. So I actually recently, just last week, 
got my Sunrun account set up again um, because we had a customer who talked to her CPA and wasn't going to get a cent back in tax credits. And there was nothing really, no way really around it. So in those situations where they just do not have the tax liability, a lot of times the lease would make sense. Okay, awesome. Um, so, and you guys are using mainly Titan in that area? Yeah, so we are mainly Titan. We are, we are looking into potentially doing, you know, Legacy started doing their own install. So Charlotte is definitely on the list. That's awesome. So yeah, I, sorry, I had to go let my dog out. <laughs> um, so you were saying that you guys are starting to do your own installs, which is great. Um, and do you feel like with the, the way that you guys are set up, um, is it going to be something that is going to just keep growing this at the same rate or you feel like at a certain point we'll have any sort of like, you know, fall off as far so as solar or do you think? Legacy, are you talking about solar or legacy power? Oh, just solar in general. I mean, it, it seems like legacy is one of the big dogs, right? They're one of the companies. Yeah. Didn't they do a thousand installs in a week? Like not long yeah. ago. Yeah. That was just last month. Yeah. Yeah. So th that's huge. They're one of the, the largest sales team so they must be doing something right and that's why I, yeah, I think I think we are officially the largest solar privately owned solar sales organization yeah no it's I I know a lot about them I've been in the industry since 2014 and um, oh, wow. you know I sold with Vivint Solar so they're always right there direct competitors with us um, so You've I always seen the progression then first yeah Yep. Yeah, it's, and, it's amazing what Doug, Luke, Damien, what they've done. It really is. Um, part of me thinks all the time that it would be pretty cool if I could start something up like they did. And the thought comes into my mind all the time. But at the end of the day, I don't see solar is consolidating. It's becoming tougher and tougher for new players to come in, I feel like because it really right. is consolidating. So I feel like maybe if it was like four or five years earlier, it would have made sense. But uh, but now um, I'm pretty happy where I am. And I think solar has a bright future. Legacy definitely has a bright future. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, um, I would definitely, I mean, I, I never talked bad about any company and we have lots yeah, of different of companies, you know, within our, uh, our mastermind. So I really appreciate you coming on and sharing openly with us about your story Absolutely. and and you know the the gratitude and the knowledge the motivation just like our our uh, mastermind is set up for um and is there anything that you'd want to want to like give out um to these guys on like closing words yeah the, i mean the biggest thing i would say especially for people who have had the past that i a similar past as mine is the biggest thing I could say is never, never give up. Just keep putting one foot, one foot in front of the other. Don't give up. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Just keep, stay humble, keep a grateful heart and just keep pushing forward. Do not give up whatever you do. Like life has so much to offer and solar is, I mean, it's, it's, it's a life-changing opportunity. So if anyone would like to get in contact with me, always feel free to reach out on Facebook. My name is AK Grover. Um, I think my Instagram's AK Grover 08. Um, there's not many AK Grovers, believe it or not. So you probably will be able to find me. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. And again, I appreciate you taking all the time out to share with us and maybe we can have you on again in the future. And um, maybe you can participate a little bit in our collaborations. Yeah, absolutely. I love what you're doing. Um, definitely, definitely keep me in mind. Heck yeah. All right, man. Well, I'm going to go ahead and end this and, uh, we will chat with you soon. Cool. Thanks, Glenn. All right. Thanks, bud.